was limited. Their understanding of the commandment of God was limited. And because of the limitation of their understanding, they felt they were free. The guilty one thought he was godly. And that's what happens whenever our understanding of the word of God is very shallow. Shallow interpretation of the word, superficial interpretation of the word is very deceptive. It's very dangerous and it's deadly and it damns the souls of men. But Christ came to give us the full revelation of God's mind. He came to reveal the standard interpretation by which all men shall be judged when they stand before the impartial judge of heaven and earth. Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 22, But I say unto you, I say unto you, he is the eternal one. And he's speaking the eternal word unto us. Is Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever? And what he said before, he's still saying the same thing today. But I say unto you that whosoever. Have, have you noticed that the Lord Jesus Christ, he, he presented the mind of God without fear, without favor. In fact, uh, you know, sometimes uh, when we're preaching and we mention this false doctrine, and then we mention the false teachers and false prophets and the churches associated with that, that false doctrine, people say, why do you do that? What if their members are in the church and their members will hear what you are saying? That's exactly how Jesus did it. He called the Pharisees by name. He called the scribes by name. And then he told the people, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the scribes. And the Pharisees were there in the audience. And the disciples of the Pharisees were there in the audience. If you really want to rescue souls, you cannot cover your mouth and say what you are saying. You have to open wide your mouth and let everybody understand what you are talking about. And so Jesus said, whosoever, Pharisees, Sadducees, Christ included, the rulers of the Jews included, the religious men and women included, and his disciples included, whosoever, is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. But the question is why? Why did Jesus put such a weight on anger? Because of what anger actually leads to. And let's go back to Genesis chapter 4. To the, to the beginning of time. In Genesis chapter 4, reading from verse 5. But unto Cain... And his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, that's anger. And his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, Cain? Why are you angry? And why is thy countenance falling? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lies at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Anger led to murder. That's why Jesus said, You have heard, it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. But I say unto you, don't even allow the temper, the smoke, 
the fire in the heart that will lead to the action. That if you are angry with your brother without a cause, you are going to be in the danger of hell fire. Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter 49. Genesis chapter 49. I'm reading from verse 5. Simeon and Levi are brethren, instruments of cruelty in their habitations. Oh, my soul, come not into their secrets, unto their assembly. Mine honor be not thou united, for in their anger they slew a man. In their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they did down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. You see what anger leads to? And what had happened is the people of Shechem had defiled Dinah, their sister. And because of that, they got angry. Two wrongs will not make a right. Shechem had done something wrong. That's true. But you get him angry and then killing him and deceiving the whole city and killing all the people there. Two wrongs will not make a right. And it says they were cruel. They murdered all those people. And you see that they even went beyond just the individual that defiled Dinah. They killed everybody in that community because of the anger. It's, uh, you know, e even if they killed Shechem alone, that would have been wrong. But they killed all the people that didn't have any hands in the sin that Shechem committed. That's what anger does. Anger does not know limitation. Anger does not have boundary. Anger does not have perimeter. When that thing comes up, it blindfolds you and the smoke will just shut out your sight, your vision. And then you just go on rampage. Rage will lead to a lot of other things that are unreasonable. That's why Jesus said, but I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother shall be in danger of the judgment. And then if the anger continues, we are going to say it out because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And whosoever shall say, Reka, shall be in the danger of the cancer. And then it's not going to stop there. The anger is going to keep on foaming and expanding and getting higher and higher. And whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. And that's what the Lord, that's why the Lord is saying, get rid of it before it even gets started. Look at Esther chapter 3. Esther chapter 3. You understand then what the Lord is saying? Get rid of the anger. Don't even allow it to come up at all. Esther chapter 3. We're looking at verse 5 and verse 6. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. This is a simple matter. Um, Haman was uh, like the second to the king. And then he was going to visit the king. And there were a lot of people there, the servants of the king. And only one man, only one Mordecai, did not bow. All the others bowed. But Haman did not see the respect and the honor of the other people. Only one person that did not bow, that bothered him. And he got angry. And he lost his cool. And then he now began to plan. What was he going to do? Look at verse 6. And he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone. For they had showed him the people of Mordecai, wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews. Can you see that just anger with one man made Haman to say, I'm going to search out all the people that belong to, to Mordecai. Anyone related to Mordecai in any way, not even the same family, not even the same tribe, the same nation, all the people of the Jews, I'm going to destroy them. Anger leads to atrocities, murder, terrible things. 
You know when you get angry, a lot of things you do, you regret later. Why don't you just sit back and stop and think? If you allow this tide, this wave, the storm within you to carry you downstream. By the time you get downstream, all the things that will have happened, you know, can ruin the whole of your life. And so he, man, were told, he said, I'm going to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. That's what the Lord is telling us. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. And let's look at um, Proverbs chapter 27. In Proverbs chapter 27, verses 3 and 4. His stone is heavy. If you've carried one before, you know. And the sand witchy. But he fools wrath is heavier than them both. If fool's wrath, anger, is heavier than them both. You understand the meaning of that? And what, what it's saying is, if there's a little child, and you put a stone on that child, that is heavy. Or if you put um, a pail of sand, or you put a bucket of sand on that child, that is heavy. In fact, it can be so heavy to cross the child to death. But then it says, a fool's wrath is heavier than them both. The decisions fathers take when they are angry. The decision husbands take when they are angry. The decision employers take when they are angry. The decision wives take when they are angry. And the decisions employees take when they are angry. They don't have any other job yet. And there is no, there is no way they can pay their house rent or feed themselves. But they get angry with the employer. And the decision they take when they are angry will make their family to be crushed in starvation and hunger. A fool's wrath is heavier than them both. The decision a driver takes when he's angry, when he begins to fume, and then the eyes become red, and then he forgets the signal, the sign on the road. The accidents that happen when drivers get angry. A fool's wrath is heavier than them both. Wrath is cruel in verse 4. And anger is outrageous. But who is able to stand before envy? In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 24, verse 25. Proverbs chapter 22. Reading from verse 24. Make no friendship with an angry man. I'll read the rest later, but please pay attention. Can you look up here? Make no friendship with an angry man. Let's say you are in courtship. You are not married yet. And the man just, you are just discussing something simple. Taking a decision. And the man gets angry. And then walks away. Brother, where are you going? Come back now. What's the matter? Brother, okay, I'm sorry. Is it because of this thing with this? Okay, come back. I'm sorry. I will draw my word. And the man is angry. And he goes away. Just leaves you lady there. And then you are pleading with people. Go and beg him so he can come back. Thank God he showed his temper when you can still walk away. Make no friendship with an angry man. You are still in courtship and the fellow is slapping you and beating you during courtship. 
And there you are saying, when well, is the will of God? Is the will of God? I'll be waiting for you here for real counseling. You'll come. And I'll see those tears, hot tears on your eyes, Pastor. The man, we're married in the church, and the man is beating me every week. You knew it before you got married. Make no friendship with an angry man. And you see, there are some people, they get into business partnership with an angry man. The fellow is fire, is a lion. A little thing we're discussing, okay, can we do it this way? How are you talking like that? You talk like a fool. You have never known about business before. That's what we're saying. You only know Bible. And the fellow is angry. Why don't you just cut the business and say bye-bye? I think I'll do my business alone. I'm not going to join with you. Make no friendship with an angry man. You see, there are other people. They just have this intimate fellowship. And the fellow is hurting you. Every time you go to see him, you know, he just gets angry all over. And then you even forgot, why did I go to him? What were we discussing? And then it just spoils your day and spoils your life. And for the next few hours, you cannot think about any other thing. The picture of his angry face is what you carry about. And your life is going down the drain. Make no, make no fellowship, no friendship with an angry man. That's what the Lord is telling us. If you're going to get into intimate relationship, intimate contract, intimate agreement with anybody, take care of that. Make, it says, no friendship with an angry man. You know what it means? Don't have any spiritual commitment in ministry with an angry man. You know, there are some, there are some people, they call them workers. And, and we have to be very careful where we stay because they get angry very easily. Brother, why did you put that thing there? And you are the leader, you are the pastor, you are his coordinator. And the man is just like sonar leader, or just as fellowship leader, or just like sanitation worker. And the fellow flies up, and you cannot even talk to the man or to the lady. Make no spiritual commitment in ministry with an angry man, with an angry woman. Are we so much in need of workers that we just accept everybody? They're not helping the work of the ministry. They're destroying the ministry. Let them go and sit down. Let them go and settle down. And then think about going to heaven. It's not work. It's heaven. So make no, make no agreement, no fellowship. No friendship with an angry man and with a furious man. Thou shalt not go. You want to introduce the man to your father and your mother. What are you going to do? Sir, we're going for introduction. And then you, you know, that day you said, okay, let us meet at 8 o'clock. And then you have an agreement with the brother that is going to take you there. And because of the hold up, you couldn't make it at 8 o'clock. And then you came 20 minutes after 8. And the man is already shivering, you know, with anger. Trembling with anger. And then you are coming and you are smiling, wanting to say, Thank you, you've been waiting for me. I'm so sorry about coming late, you know. The road was so bad today. And the man just, you know, dropped something on the ground to make a great noise. Where are you coming from at this time? And you have delayed me until this. And look, don't you have, don't you have sense of time? And he said, fellow, you are, you are going to take your parents for introduction. Why don't you say, uh, my, you know, I don't know whether to say brother or man, whatever. Let's go back home. We cannot go to my daddy in this condition. All right, let us go now. You know, he commands you like a military man. And then you want to go for introduction. If I were you, 
you know, if I was your earthly father, biological father, and you are my daughter, and if I say my daughter, go back home, don't, don't bring an angry man to my house for introduction. You men, get ready to marry. If you really want to get married, all this temper will go. All this fighting will go. Because if you are fighting now at the car park, motor park, while you are going for introduction, what will you do when there are no people there? You and I alone at home. If we are not careful, you might kill that woman. Make no friendship with an angry man. That's what the Bible says. This is why the Lord is teaching us his word. And then he's telling us how we ought to be very careful and watch. So that our lives will be peaceful. Your life will be peaceful in Jesus' name. With a furious man, thou shalt not go. Lest thou learn his way and get his near to thy soul. May God deliver every one of us.